so uh, let me give you the kind of overview of the topics that we're going to cover uh, in the next hour or so. I want to start by sharing with you uh, some examples of good and bad project ideas. Um, going back into history, looking at, you know, situations where, quote unquote, we got lucky and situations where we didn't. I want to fast forward into the 21st century and um, analyze uh, some interesting industry statistics that have been gathered uh, mainly from PMI published uh, materials, but not only. Uh, then I would like to spend some time with you and try to, and this is probably the most important part of the presentation, to uh, derive a formula. Uh, what ingredients do you need to deliver great projects? We will kind of jump into the project portfolio management. We will talk about the three pillars of the PPM. Um, uh, we will uh, compare project management and project portfolio management, and um, we will talk about some myths that exist, uh, even with certified project managers, about the role of uh, project portfolio management. We will look at the project portfolio management process overview. We'll chat about what happens with our project portfolio management. Uh, and then at the close to the end of the presentation, as promised, I will share with you uh, three real life examples of project portfolio management models developed with my facilitation. Um, one would be, you know, just to provide kind of a breadth of examples. Uh, it would be a Canadian university. Uh, second one would be Eastern European energy company. And the third one would be a bearing manufacturer, so a product company, you know, and the project portfolio management models uh, they have developed. Uh, and then we will go into questions and answers. Start um, this presentation uh, with a fun quiz. So uh, what you're going to see on this slide and the next slide, uh, to kind of paraphrase David Letterman, top 10 signs uh, that your company needs project portfolio management. And here's what I want you to do. As I read through these top 10 signs, if you think they're applicable to your company you're currently working for, bend your finger. And at the end of the present, uh, sorry, at the end of the of these two slides, uh, look at your, the palms of your hands and uh, type in how many fingers you have bent. With me on this? So again, I will go through each one of them one by one. If this is applicable to the, currently, uh, to the company you're currently working for, bend your finger. At the end, just type in in the chat box, um, you know, how many are applicable to your company, and then we'll see whether you actually came to the right place. And resource managers often fight over resources. What does it mean? Uh, you're a project manager and you've been assigned a project. Uh, say you're from IT and you're doing something for finance, uh, and the finance director comes to you and says, this is super duper important project. You have to, to do it for me, and you go, okay. I will need three financial analysts to sit with me and tell me more about the requirements. And the director of finance says, no, they're too busy. So, priorities of projects frequently change with resources reassigned, which um, imagine that in January, the CEO of your company says, project A is the super duper important initiative for our company, uh, and we must deliver this project. Uh, this is do or die. By the time you end up saying March, you suddenly discover that project A is now priority number 57, uh, and projects B, C, and D are now the most important projects with all of the resources thrown at those projects. Managers have authority to unilaterally approve and release projects. Uh, let me give you an example of that. Uh, a semi-government organization here in Canada, uh, the director of the PMO told me, you know how projects are initiated at our company? A uh, CEO walks into the boardroom and says, wouldn't it be really cool if we could do this? Starter. Before, projects are started as soon as approved by senior managers, irrespective of the resource availability. Says, sounds like a cool idea to do. Hey, okay, let's do that. Nobody even checks, do we have enough people? Do we have enough money to do that? Project is started. Projects are frequently late and or over budget and or do not deliver the full scope promise. Self-explanatory, I'm not gonna give you any examples of that one. With me, bending your fingers, good. Next slide. If strategic idea is implemented, and by strategic I mean, idea, I mean a project, but the company sometimes does not achieve the expected improvement. So basically, you finish a project, let's pretend for the sake of the argument, on time and on budget, you deliver the full scope, one year goes by, you look back at the project and go, why the heck did we do that? 
implemented the software, nobody is using it. So we build this, I don't know, building, and that seems to have no tenants in it. There is no comprehensive document or portfolio that links all of the organizational projects to the strategic plan. Um, if I walk into your CEO's office and I say, please produce a list of all of the projects uh, currently undergoing at your company, assuming that he or she can produce that list, which I doubt. And I randomly pick any project on the list and go, why, do you do why are you doing this project? able to answer me um, immediately by linking that particular project to the strategy. You know what? Our strategy is this, hence we're doing that project. A significant turnover at the senior management level, right up through president, which basically means that uh, at the beginning of the year, the new team of executives comes in, they make promises, give you know very um, encouraging speeches, um, then some noise happens, years later or two years later, the entire team leaves and the new team comes in with a whole bunch of promises. And that continues over and over again. Strategic plan is presented as a list of initiatives or a list of projects. The cause effect logic tying those projects to the goals of the organization is absent. Again, why are you doing this project? You know, people have trouble answering that question. The list of projects is not prioritized. A is as important as project B and as important as project C. Therefore, it is assumed that all of the ideas should be implemented simultaneously. End of the quiz. I now uh, invite you to type in uh, in your chat boxes um, how many of those signs are applicable to you. I will give you like five to ten seconds. Five, three. Okay, uh, uh, usually the situation is such I've, uh, having conducted that quiz on numerous occasions, being in the private sector, uh, typically the number tends to be between five and seven. Uh, if you're working in the government sector, that number tends to be between seven and ten. But the good news is that you all came to the right place. I mean, these questions are going to be answered uh, a bit at the height level during this presentation. Let's move on. Let's talk about some of the successful examples of, you know, projects, ideas, turning into good products. Uh, uh, accidental discovery number one, a group of pharmaceutical chemists working at the Pfizer uh, Sandwich Kent Research Facility in England uh, study a specific drug. They study it to use for hypertension, high blood pressure, and um, heart disease. Uh, they conduct the first clinical trial in Morriston Hospital in Swansea. Unfortunately, they discovered that uh, the drug they were uh, researching has very little impact on the high blood pressure or heart condition. It has a very interesting side effect. What kind of drug they discovered as a result of that? Next example. Who is working for a Raytheon company back in the 50s, I believe, uh, is walking past a radar tube and he notices that the chocolate bar in his pocket has melted. So, the following experiment he puts a small ball of popcorn in front of the tube, it quickly pops all over the room. As a result of that, he discovers a microwave open. Number three, uh, back in the 40s. Uh, Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman is working in Switzerland trying to synthesize an alkaloid derivative.